Welcome to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Each week, Redskins Chronicles takes an in-depth look at a piece of this team's storied legacy. It's Dallas week, so today, not one, but two of the team's all-time greats. Numbers 42 and 43 will make an appearance on the show. They both like beating the Cowboys, and they both love the game. Of course, I'm talking about Charlie Taylor and Larry Brown. Before we hear from them, the Redskins are on top of the NFC East by virtue of a big win over the New York Giants last Sunday at FedEx Field. The Skins are 5-6 and six and tied with New York. The tiebreaker at the present time favors the Redskins. But with five games remaining, there's no time to celebrate. Washington did what they had to do last week, defeating the Giants 20-14. The Redskins got out of the blocks fast. The defense came out fired up, putting pressure on Eli Manning and the Giants' offense from the outset, forcing two Manning interceptions early. Redskins did not take advantage of the turnovers for points, but the Redskins offense did. They hit pay dirt with the long cousins to Deshaun Jackson touchdown pass. What a beauty. Matt Jones with a big play as well. A screen pass from Captain Kirk up the right sideline. The Skins jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead. You knew the game was far from over, however. While FedEx Field was delirious, the Giants remained dangerous. Touchdown pass to Randall followed by a touchdown pass to Odell Beckham Jr. What a great catch. But on this occasion, the Redskins were too much for the Giants, winning their fifth straight at home at FedEx Field and breaking a five-game series winning streak for the New York Giants. Manning came into the game with just six interceptions, but by the time the dust had settled, he'd thrown three picks. And how about the showstopper Ryan Kerrigan and the Redskins defense getting to Manning repeatedly? and making him pay. The Redskins move to the top of the division with the home game coming up Monday night against the Dallas Cowboys. Here's head coach Jay Gruden from earlier this week. They still have the mammoth offensive line. They still have Jason Witten. You know, they still have, uh, you know, uh, McFadden, who's a heck of a back. They got Des Bryant still. They're a very good football team, you know, and defensively, you know, they have, uh, you know, obviously Hardy have a good pass rush. They play hard. Rod Marinelli gets up, goes guys ready to go. They've been close. You know, and they obviously had the injury to uh, Romo, but, you know, this is a football team that can, uh, you know, dominate the line of scrimmage, and that's something we're focusing on. we got to play physical, continue our physical play up front especially, and that's the biggest challenge this week is the match of physicality. Their offensive line against our defensive line and, and vice versa. So that's where the key matchups will be, in my opinion. The big message is we just got to continue to get better, focus on ourselves, getting better, and, uh, you know, make sure we continue to stress the ball, uh, getting after the ball and protecting the football, and uh, we'll go from there. Try to get them in here and develop them and uh, continue to get these guys better and put them in positions to succeed. Um, you know, every time we put a team out there, I feel confident that we have a chance to win. More on Monday's game against the Cowboys coming up a little bit later. Coming up next, though, we pull up a chair with one of my personal all-time favorite Redskins, the great Larry Brown, as Redskins Chronicles continues. <laughs> really had everything. The one whiskey made to the standards of a king. And nothing has changed since. It's game day in America. Across the country, fans are watching football in a whole new way. We join a league, we pick a team, and we compete like never before. Today, watching football is more exciting than ever. Because today, we fan duel. Start today and join the millions who've already played FanDuel. Enter the promo code and we'll refund your entry fee if you don't win. I got tickets, Metro tickets. You need a Metro ticket, talk to me, please. How do I even know these are real tickets? Yeah, you, you know, you just to touch it. How do I know they're legit? Is the, this leather legit? I mean, how do we really know? It looks good, right? Is the Metro paying you to do this? No, I'm paying myself. I gotta oh, make profit. Makes more sense. Does the baby need a Metro ticket? I'll give her one on me. These tickets, they're not stealing your soul. You can look at them. Man, nobody wants to buy tickets from a guy on the street. I don't understand.
The new Redskins mobile app is here. Download for free on iTunes and Google Play and create a profile for the chance to win exclusive Redskins rewards all season long. Live access, the latest news, videos, scores, breaking news alerts, and more. Connect with other Redskins fans through enhanced chat and social media outlets. Get the new Redskins mobile app today on iTunes or Google Play. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Today, in honor of Dallas Week, we're going to talk to two of the team's all-time greats. First, number 43, Larry Brown. Nobody ran harder than Larry Brown. He loved the game. Great passion for NFL football. Here's our conversation with number 43 from earlier this year. You had the opportunity to play with some great, great football players. What did it mean to you to play with the likes of some? We'll talk about Charlie specifically, but a Charlie Taylor, a Sonny Jurgens, and a Jerry Smith. A lot, a lot of uh, very, very great players you played with. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you? Um, it meant a great deal to me uh, because um, those guys played as a team. They weren't. Um, more, they weren't concerned about their individual accomplishments on the field. And we all played that way. I mean, nobody complained when I ran the ball 20, 25 times a game. Nobody complained when Charlie would catch 10 or 15 passes a game. And we were all like uh, specialists. And uh, we played, played as a team. Yeah. Played to win, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So tell me about Charlie. What, what kind of football player was he? When you, when you first got there, what did you think of him? Well, um, he had extraordinary, extraordinarily, uh, he was extraordinarily talented. Uh, I'd never seen anybody that uh, could do so much after he caught the ball. I mean, he was a great receiver, but when he, the moves he made after he caught the ball were absolutely amazing. I mean, he could, um, you know, all I can see, all I can recall is him spinning and turning and faking and, and guys, the uh, defenders missing him, you know. Yeah. Uh, he was very, very good at, rec at, at receiving, uh, at catching the ball, he's very good. He was a very good um, uh, open field runner and he was a good uh, blocker. How hard do you suppose, I mean, you're a running back, and like you said, a blocking back coming out of college and a great mm -hmm. running back in the NFL. Charlie came in, he was rookie of the year as a running back, and they switched him to wide receiver. How, how hard do you think that transition would have been? Um, I, I, I would think it would be, I would have had a difficult time doing, making a transition like that, but Charlie, you know, Charlie's pretty tall. Yeah. And for a running back, I guess back then in the day you had Guys like Lenny Moore, were, he was tall. Uh, you know, it's 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 interesting. Uh, it's 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 interesting to know that he did make that transition. I, I, yeah. What kind of teammate was Charlie Taylor for you? Great talent, but how about as a teammate? Uh, I mean, Charlie was always laughing or smiling, one or the, one or the other. You know, uh, never saw him. I bet you, I could count on one hand the time the times he lost his temper, you know? Really? Uh, he was always smiling and, j and joking, you know? And, and did you have a, a feeling, you know, that he became one of the all-time greats? He made the Hall of Fame. Did you, when you, when you saw him back then, you say, you know, this guy one day, I think he's one of the best to ever play the game? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. He was one of the greatest wide receivers I've ever had the opportunity to, to, do, to play with. When you see your old teammates, when you see Charlie nowadays, well, tell, describe to us those feelings and and uh, those memories. You guys, you know, obviously teammates forever. Right. Uh, when I see them, I always joke with them. I said, you know, uh, where, when they call the uh, the famous Vince Lombardi sweep, Charlie was known for making these vicious blocks uh, uh, on the outside linebacker, and I I would always say, you know. It's, it's the sweep, 48 sweep. Get ready, get ready to block, Charlie. And uh, uh, but he was he was very good, you know, very good blocker, you know. And I and I admired that uh, because he set the standard. A lot of the young guys, the young receivers then, uh, I guess, had to to survive. They had to emulate him. 
You know, so I would think that you got to attribute some of your yardage to Charlie blocking up field. Yeah, yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> what does it mean to you when a guy like Gary Clark gets down on his hands and knees? He told me he was going to do that. What does that mean to you when a younger generation Redskin shows you that type of respect? Um, it's unique. It's different. Um, uh, it also puts me in an embarrassing situation. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's life. Larry, look at you. You're in prime shape here. What do you do to stay in shape? I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're a few years older than me. We're not that much older than right. me, but, but look at you. You're in fantastic shape. What is your regimen to stay in shape? Well, I try to every morning. Um, I try to do a mile on the treadmill, and I do about 150 sit-ups. Wow, and I remember how hard you ran, and by the time you were done, you were a little banged up, but you, uh, your body's in pretty good shape now. Yeah, the body's in pretty good shape, but the knees are not, and I'm looking forward to um, having surgery on at least one of them uh, this June, and then maybe shortly afterwards get the other one done. I need them done. You need them. And the reason I haven't had it, the opportunity to get that, get to have the surgery is because uh, you know, two years ago, my mother fell, and I had to go to Pittsburgh and get her and relocate her here. And until I have the proper backup, or in terms of uh, helping her, yeah. then you know, uh, I couldn't uh, have the surgery. So I'm gonna get it done in June. You ought to talk to Sonny Jurgensen. He had both done a couple of years ago. You, he can give you. His thoughts on it? I told him he's suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what he said? He says after he gets them done, he tells me, this is the worst pain. He says, this is horrible. Two days later, he says, why did I wait so long to get this done? <laughs> Our thanks to Larry Brown for the sit down. Now, coming up next on Redskins Chronicles, we'll pick up a conversation we started a couple of weeks ago with a Hall of Famer, Charlie Taylor. Here is Redskins Chronicles from Redskins Park continues. Don't go away. The holidays are here and so is Toyotathon. Wrap up a great year-end deal on a reliable Toyota, like 0% APR financing on many of our most popular models. And every new Toyota comes with a two years or 25,000 miles no cost maintenance plan. Be one of the first to get a completely redesigned Tacoma and lease one for as low as $259 a month. Or lease a full-size Tundra for only $329 a month. Make the holidays happier at Toyotathon. Uh-oh. <laughs> Toyota, let's go places. You can be the best in your house. And then your state. Then get all the love. You can be the best in this house. You could be faster than the fastest. You can carry on a legacy. Then add a couple of these. And then make everyone want to be like you. And you can stop there, but you won't. Because you're not done yet. For the athletes moving the game forward, Gatorade's creating the fuel to do the same. Fueling today, fueling the future. What do you get the man who really had everything? The one whiskey made to the standards of a king. And nothing has changed since. Introducing Bank a Million, new from the Virginia Lottery. Thanks, Hank. You got it. It's a chance to win an even million dollars. Got you the paper. Thanks, Hank. Greg! Oh, thanks. With Bank a Million, the Virginia Lottery pays the taxes. Good morning, Vera. Thanks, Hank. Just checking. You know me. And you walk away with the full million dollars. Still a one? Yeah, and six zeros. A one in six zeros. Unbelievable. Bank a million. You bank the million. We pay the taxes. See you after lunch. The new Redskins mobile app is here. Download for free on iTunes and Google Play. And create a profile for the chance to win exclusive Redskins rewards all season long. Live access. The latest news. Videos. Scores. Breaking news alerts. And more. Connect with other Redskins fans through enhanced chat and social media outlets. Get the new Redskins mobile app today on iTunes or Google Play.
Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park with the teams wrapping up preparations for their Monday night matchup with the Cowboys. More on Dallas a little bit later in the show. By now, I'm sure you know the Redskins Broadcast Network produced a documentary focusing on Redskins Hall of Famer Charlie Taylor. He's a great player with a great personality. He loved playing the game, and some of his stories were priceless. You also had Jerry Smith as the teammate. Mm -hmm. you know, Jerry and, and I went to school together. That's right, Arizona State. Uh -huh. And you had Bobby Mitchell, and there's a famous picture of you, Jerry, Bobby, and Sonny. You guys probably thought you had a lot of firepower on offense back then. We, we, we didn't, we, we would, they'd kick off and we'd get the ball. We didn't worry about anything. If everybody ran and did what they were supposed to do, somebody's open. And you could tell who was open by the way the defense rolled. And if it would roll my way, I knew I had to go get the second guy. Pass the first guy, because I would pull that thing over to the right. Jerry, Bobby would be on the left, work doing their thing. So did it, did it did it surprise you? You guys didn't win more games with all that offensive talent. Well, we we, we had some holes on defense, so and we realized that. And uh, so we just had Samuelsi. You got to score thirty five today, you know. And he wouldn't run. He, we had to score forty two really to win. But. Uh, we tried and we didn't get down on each other. We, we loved, you know, we loved our defense, who we had. And uh, we had some good players, Pat Fisher's and other guys. We just didn't have enough. So with all the stars you had on offense, was he kind of like the heart of the team because of how he played on defense? Even though the defense gave up a lot of points, what was Sam's role on that team? We're gonna go talk to Sam too, you know. Sam was a, he was a coach on the field. I'll put it that way. At least that's what he thought was thinking, and uh, he's had some 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 names: Powell on number two. <laughs> Sam Sam was a great player, man. He was, and uh, I just had all the respect. And when they made the what was the movie they made about Sam? Oh yeah, the Violent World the of Sam. The Violent World of Sam. I'd never seen that, but it was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> you also had uh, Chris Hamburger. You played with. Oh god. Now, so you what made what made him special? Being Chris Hamburg. Chris was a violent guy. He had a clothesline play, man. He couldn't play today. They find he he would get fined so much today that he would be working for nothing. <laughs> but he loved the game, so that probably was okay. You were known as a very physical blocker too. Why did you take so much pride in that blocking? Well, you got running backs like Charlie Haraway, Larry Brown, those type of guys, and you like to chip on people to help them out. So that's my thing. I didn't mess around. I'd go find somebody, especially their be better linebackers who were chasing Larry. And you had size to be able to do something. Correct, yeah. So could, would it Plus be... Plus it was a little bit of protection for me because guys were taking shots at me, and I had to retaliate. You know. Well, these guys said you used to lay people out, that you were one of the, one of the right. most physical receivers. Now, you say because you want to help out the running backs. Being an old running back yourself, you know how important it was for your wideouts to block. Absolutely, see? So you, you look over that chip to give you that angle where you can cut to the right and spin up the sideline, yeah. Kind of, I'm gonna ask you about Lombardi, but what kind of player was Larry Brown? Because he came around with Lombardi, and, and Larry came, and you know, he, he ran with a lot of passion. He loved the game. He was, he was a slasher. He, he wasn't really that fast. Oh, he was fast enough, but Larry would make contact and bounce off the contact. And that had a tendency to wear you for a little while, yeah. Did you in any way take him under your wing? Hmm, not really, not really. I was a great teammate of his, and I, like I cared for him. You know, when we ran the off tackle there, I felt obligated to take care of one of those two linebackers, the middle linebacker or the weak side linebacker. All right, so you got Bill uh, McPeak, yeah. and you got Otto Graham, a guy who you really didn't understand mm -hmm. why he pointed you out years before. I have no idea. And you guys aren't winning. And here comes the great Vince Lombardi, who everybody knew from Green Bay. What was your initial reaction? I was just honored to be on the field with the guy. You know, I'd seen some of his teams and knew that he didn't take any BS. He wanted quality and uh, just happy to have him on board, yeah. How long did it take you guys to buy in to his philosophy? And it actually ended up paying off, but did it take any selling? Or it just, it was, he was Lombardi. It was just Lombardi. Hey, day one, he'd come in and say, Mr., my time is 15 minutes early. And we knew 
you are not late to a meeting. If you if you are there 15 minutes before, you're all right, you're cool. But you come at five and the meeting's at five, you're late. And uh, we had to get kid in here. We drafted a guy, Ray McDonald, big running sure, back. Running back, yeah. And uh, he got to com got confused at where we were meeting after lunch, and you could hear him running down the hall. The flip flops were popping, and he was coming down to, and realized where we were. Walked in a meeting, because somebody said, report to the Roanoke Buffalo, somebody. Just cut him right there. Wow. And that was enough to say, whoa, everybody else said, whoa, let me straighten up. You know, you, you just used the word that Sam used all the time, mister. <laughs> and, and that was something that Lombardi, did Lombardi call everybody mister? Yeah. So and right. what kind of relationship did you have with Lombardi? Evidently, we were pretty close because I remember playing Pittsburgh and I got hit in the mouth. And uh, they went there, up, we had to stitch me back up. And Coach Lombardi held one hand and the, his priest held the other hand. That's, and I'm going, whoa, this ain't, I can handle this. I got Lombardi <laughs> and Father Sweden on one side and Lombardi on the other. I'm covered. Yeah. I, I had a chance, you know. I don't know, we, I just got along well with him. I had no problem. Because it was ways to deal with what, like the down and ups, they're tough. But the place to be on the down and ups is right in front of the coach. He's right here and I'm right here. That's the best place to be. Because he's looking over over <laughs> me to see who what doing it right. And he never, and I'm, I'm all into it, you know. I'm doing it, yeah. You're a smart guy, Charlie. You're a and, smart uh, guy. And uh, on top of that, According to Paul Horney, who I talk to quite often, the man, we got along well. And he just did what he did. He said, you're dummy this week, don't even worry about it. You, we want you to run down here, you know. And I would, you know, without arguing about it, you ain't throwing me the ball. I know you're not going to throw it to me. That's not my job this week. Let me ask you this. He was hard on people physically, but the mental side of the game, oh, he got you guys to believe you could win. Oh, absolutely. And that's what that's what he that's what his his number one deal was. One one team, one 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 call, one unit. And that was it. And his wife, she was just as involved as he was. She brought the wives together, there was no nitpicking about your husband did that and did this. No. We'd all meet after after a game, have dinner together. How how tragic was it? Tell me your feelings, because you only had one year with him. Unreal. I, I had a chance. He called. He called me. I'm in. I'm in Dallas, and he called me. Say, meet me in Miami. I go, Coach. What? You know, meet me in Miami. Ticket is. You know. I go. Well, we do a rapid shave commercial. I go, Coach. You sure you want, you want me? <laughs> he go. I call you then, and that's. And I think it ran for a little while. You feel cheated that he, Sonny says it was the best year he ever had. It was, man. I mean, you know, we would put basic stuff in and, and it would work. Like the sweet, Green Bay sweet, hey, it's going to work. And he was such a, he was such a, I don't know what you call this, but he used to see a guy that he knew from some other team. They come stop by practice, he will hey, come on and show him how to run this week. And the guy would come off the street, get down and run this week. Then you go, all right, I'll talk to you later, yeah. One of the greatest to ever play the game, number 42, Charlie Taylor. When we come back on Redskins Chronicles, we take a look at the Dallas Cowboys. Coming up Monday night, don't go away. This holiday, Ford, America's best-selling brand, is giving you more. The Ford Holiday Sales Event. With 0% financing for 60 months on 2015 F-150 and Focus and 2016 Fusion and Escape plus $1,000 holiday bonus cash on 2015 Focus and 2016 Fusion and Escape. It's the best gift ever. Now, during the Ford Holiday Sales Event, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus $1,000 holiday bonus cash on select vehicles. See your local Ford dealer. Who's the rebel now? No way. Yes way. Savor an Egg McMuffin anytime you like. A fresh cracked egg, melted cheese, Canadian bacon, and an English muffin with real butter. McDonald's all-day breakfast menu. Yeah! It's time to start breaking some rules.
whiskey made to the standards of a king. And nothing has changed since. Hey, Larry, great segment. One more, it's time to go home. Home? My home's got so many pesky plumbing problems, I really need some help. I know. I'll call the five-star plumbing experts at Crop Metcalf. Hey, Larry, are you ready? Of course I'm ready. I'm calling Crop Metcalf right now. 1-800-GO-CROP or visit CropMetcalf.com. And remember, Crop Metcalf is the one with five stars. Crop Metcalf, home of the five-star technician and the official plumbing company of the Washington Redskins. The new Redskins mobile app is here. Download for free on iTunes and Google Play and create a profile for the chance to win exclusive Redskins rewards all season long. Live access, the latest news, videos, scores, breaking news alerts, and more. Connect with other Redskins fans through enhanced chat and social media outlets. Get the new Redskins mobile app today on iTunes or Google Play. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Up next for the Skins, a home game Monday night against division rival the Dallas Cowboys. And Dallas is 3-8, coming off a loss to Carolina on Thanksgiving Day. Tony Romo hurt his left collarbone again. He's out for the year, which means Matt Castle will be at the controls. Darren McFadden is the Cowboys' main running back threat. Dallas's offense is rated 29th in the NFL, but the running game rated 11th with McFadden averaging 3.8 a carry. Des Bryant missed some time earlier this year with a broken foot. He's back. Jason Witten, the team's leading receiver, the veteran tight end, has 55 receptions. Cowboys defense is tough, especially against the pass. They're rated 7th in the NFL, 8th overall defensively. And if you know anything about this rivalry, you know you can throw the records out the window. Both sides looking for a win under the bright lights of Monday Night Football at FedEx Field. A look at the schedule with the Skins facing the Cowboys twice and the Eagles in the last five weeks. Washington controls its own destiny, but they need a win over Dallas to stay in that position. So a big one at FedEx Field Monday night, it's the Redskins and Cowboys. We thank you for watching this edition of Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park, and we'll see you here next time.